Welcome back. All right, I want to talk about Dot and Bubble, the most recent episode of Doctor Who, which I know came out, let's see, it's Tuesday, it came out on Friday, so apologies that it's later, but I do want to talk about it. Um, it's an interesting episode. I watched it a couple nights ago. Um, it, now, I've seen some complaints online that the Doctor is not in it a lot, and that it's back-to-back -back what they call Doctor Light episodes, meaning the Doctor's kind of in the background, shows up at the end kind of thing. The thing is, some of the best episodes of Doctor Who have either been Doctor Light or not really episodes where the Doctor's going anywhere. Like, Midnight comes to mind as one where you never see what the actual monster is, which makes it scarier. And the the Doctor, it, it's just different. It's different. It feels like a Twilight Zone episode. And um, that was one where Donna's barely in it. I think that was during the Donna run. Yeah, it was during the Donna run. And it was a very, very well done episode, that one as well. Uh, Dot and Bubble was good. It's a little heavy-handed at points. There are certain times where you kind of feel that nudge of, see what they're saying, see what they're saying. And it's this idea that, you know, social media kind of controls our lives and you can't see where you're going because you're so, so enamored and, and enraptured with what's going on on your screen. Um, and, I mean, that that is a bit heavy-handed. The interesting thing is that... Uh, it, it definitely has a bit of a twist to it. So again, people who want to watch it have probably already watched it. Um, but the character that we're following, who is this um, kind of, I don't want to say useless, but she, she doesn't know how to walk without arrows in front of her, telling her where to step. I thought it was kind of ridiculous at one point. I was kind of like, okay, wait a minute. She can't walk forward? She needs an arrow? Like, huh? And then as soon as she has to run, she runs with no trouble. And I'm thinking, running should be very difficult for her. She just learned how to walk, and now she's running with no problem. And then there's a scene, too, where they're running down a few flights of stairs, and she's just sprinting down. And I'm like, okay, um, no. And I actually turned to Yvonne, and I was like, okay, so 10 minutes ago, she couldn't walk without the arrows. Now she's running down flights of stairs with no problem. It just... Um, I, that was one thing that, that sort of bugged me a little bit, but that's kind of a nitpick. I did think it was interesting that the, the character we're following we're supposed to be rooting for turns. And suddenly you see that she's not so sweet. Um, she is, she is kind of dingy, but she's also extremely self-absorbed, very self-centered, and doesn't really care about other people. You know, meet somebody that she treats like he's a celebrity... And, oh, he's so beautiful and he's so wonderful and he's so hot and this and that. And then when there's a life or death situation and this, this you know, computer's trying to kill them, she basically turns and goes, yeah, no, you should kill him first, not me. And so it does. And I was like, wow, that's, I didn't expect that. And then um, the doctor offers to help her and she says no. Now, the way I read it was that... He was an outsider, and she's been taught that people within their society are the only ones that you are to trust and to be around, and they're the ones who are all, you know, the, the smart ones, even though her people are completely wiped out at this point. Um, the doctor is basically telling them, too, if you go out on the planet and you leave this city, you're going to die. There's monsters everywhere, seems to be what's being hinted at there. Or at the very least, they don't have the skills to actually rebuild society or take care of themselves. These are, you know, these are people who've been in their their bubble forever and it's 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 a bubble. And so they're they're going to die if they go out into the wilderness by themselves and that's their only option if they don't get in the TARDIS and they're like we don't want to get in the TARDIS and they leave. Um, now when I was looking at uh, reviews and things online um, a lot of comments about how uh, the character, the main character again, who did the turn, that she's actually racist. That the reason she won't go with the doctor is because he's black. Now, I didn't pick that up when I watched it, but in reading through other things people have been saying about the episode, I can see it. I can see it. I would also say that the way that the society was set up for this episode, um, where they're human but they're not from Earth kind of thing, but they're just xenophobic in general. So I think anybody who is outside of their 
again, the word bubble comes to mind, but anybody outside of their society is not worthy of their time, is not worthy of being trusted. Um, <clears throat> you know, thanks for saving my life, but now that now that we're safe because the monsters are back there, um, we, we don't really care, we're, we're gonna leave. And so that's, that's kind of how I, I saw it, but I can understand why the race thing's there because she wasn't wanting to talk to the doctor, but she was willing to talk to Ruby. Ruby didn't have a problem. I also felt that Ruby was being less pushy than the doctor. The doctor was being far more pushy than, than Ruby. Um, what's interesting is I was reading too that this, this episode was originally written for the 10th doctor and that they kind of repurposed it and changed it around a little bit for the 15th Doctor, which is Shooty Gotwa's character. And it felt like a 10th Doctor episode. It, that's, what I, that's what I really like about this season. It feels like old Doctor Who. It feels like 9th Doctor, 10th Doctor. It absolutely would fit right in. Um, complete with the monsters in this, which are just giant slugs. They're giant slug monsters. Um, I think my favorite post I saw online about this episode, and I think it was on uh, the formerly known as Twitter, now X, was somebody took the Kent Brockman, you know, when he's oh, hail ants, and they crossed out ants, and they wrote slugs. You know, I worship our new uh, slug overlords. Um, and I, I thought that was quite entertaining. I thought that was pretty funny. It was, it was creepy. I thought it was well done. Um, I, I really enjoyed it. I thought... I mean, at, at do I want there to be more of the Doctor in the episodes? Well, yes. But the other thing is, the last episode, it was a Doctor Light episode where he was barely in it because he was still filming Sex Education, the final season of the Sex Education show, which I never finished because it was awful. Not that his character in it was awful. He's fantastic in that series. In fact, if there was more of him, he's actually the better character. The main characters on the show are kind of insufferable. And by the time you reach the final season of Sex Education, the main characters, really not entertaining, um, not interesting, I don't care. And that was the problem I had with Sex Education. That's why I stopped watching it. Because I'm like, I really don't care what happens now. I don't care what happens to any of these people. I'm kind of done. So there's that. But uh, this episode I thought was really well written, really well done. Um, I'm excited about what's going to come the rest of the season. Obviously, we have uh, just a few episodes left. It'll be done before the end of June. And uh, I, I'm just going to, you know, br bring it all in and enjoy this season for what it's been. It really has rejuvenated my love for the show. Reminded me why I would religiously watch every episode. I'm going to be honest though, this episode, there was two days before I actually watched it from when it was released. Uh, for hockey reasons and just being busy reasons. But yeah, I, I watched it and really enjoyed it. And I would honestly recommend it to people. Again, I know there are a lot of people that got put off from Doctor Who during the Jodie Whittaker era. Maybe even uh, during the Peter Capaldi era. I like the Peter Capaldi era, but I understand there are people that didn't. Um, the season with Bill, I was not a big fan of either, but I love Peter Capaldi's Doctor, so I suffered through it. But, yeah, um, the, I, I think where the show is now is it, it's, it's back to what it was before. And with Russell T. Davis running it, it makes a lot of sense because he was the, the showrunner in 2005 when the show came back. He was the showrunner during the 9th and 10th Doctor's runs. And then Stephen Moffat took over when the 11th Doctor came in. And Moffat's run started off okay. I wasn't a fan of the 6th season, but I did enjoy the 5th. And then the 7th season, I thought it, it picked right back up. Um, and then for the 8th, 9th, and 10th seasons, those are the ones where you have Peter Capaldi. Which, again, there was some hit and miss there. Uh, and there's always been that. There's always been episodes of Doctor Who that aren't as good as others. But I, I've enjoyed every episode of this season. I understand Space Babies put people off. It's not a great episode. It's not. Um, I think there's a, there's there's an argument to be made that if, if you're not a big fan of some of the cheesy, corny Doctor Who stuff, you could watch the episodes that aren't Space Babies. You could start with the second episode and go from there. Um, but I'm, I'm excited to see where this is going. Uh, it was a bit of a break from the whole supernatural storylines we have going on that are overarching the season. 
Uh, but yeah, I, I, I did enjoy it. I did think it was a good episode. But I'd be interested to know your thoughts in the comment section below. Um, I think the Doctor and Ruby are fantastic. It's the best. It's my favorite combination I've seen since Capaldi and Clara. That's It's my favorite. And Capaldi and Clara might be my favorite of all the pairings because there was no romantic tension there. There was between the 11th Doctor, played by Matt Smith, and, and Clara, which was weird and inconsistent. Uh, although if you watch back with Rose and the Doctor, with the 10th Doctor, it, their romance was very inconsistent. It's just, it's vo it's not there for some of the episodes, and all of a sudden it's back. And, of course, in the end, there's this heartbreaking thing, and I'm thinking, well, wait, two episodes ago, wasn't he with somebody else? Didn't he... Didn't he go through the fireplace and wasn't he wasn't he in love with somebody else a couple episodes ago? But anyways, that's a whole other discussion for other, for another time. Uh, but let me know your thoughts. Hit like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. I know there's a lot of negativity around Doctor Who right now. I I don't buy into that. I don't. Uh, I think, and I, I said this in the the if review I did last night. Um, I I think a lot of it is just that's what people subscribe for. If if some of these people posted reviews or videos where they're like actually. That was a really good episode. It was great. Um, I think they, I don't know. I, I feel like they, they'd be worried that there's going to be backlash because they had the nerve to say they liked something. Um, it's it's weird. We're in a we're in a very very weird era where everything is hated. Everybody hates everything, and that's just that's that's how it is. All right. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, hit like and subscribe if you haven't done so. The channel's just flirting with twenty eight thousand nine hundred. I'd love to see twenty nine thousand soon. Uh, keeping in mind that I'll be doing more videos on this channel over the next few months because, hey, you know, hockey is, is winding down and almost done. So definitely more time to talk about other things. But thank you guys so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.